In this episode, we will discuss the novel Midek Ali, written by Nagui Mufaz. The novel was first published in 1947 in Arabic in Egypt, and then translated and released in English in 1966. Nagui Mafuz was born and raised in Cairo, Egypt in 1911, and he died in 2006. He was a brilliant author of over 30 novels, 100 short stories, and over 200 articles. Nagui Mafuz often concealed political judgments under allegory and symbolism in his short stories and novels. Midak Ali takes place in Egypt. Nagui Mafuz was a civil servant and was part of the Egyptian bureaucracy. Mafuz works a lot of his creativity from all of his past experiences in Egypt. I think it's very interesting how the author can take a personal experience and knowledge of his home to work into his novels and add culture. This book is definitely an interesting read, full of various characters, and when I say full, I mean full. I keep a notepad and pen around to jot down the different characters and what they do in the book and for a living. When I read a novel, I want to have some characters I like, some I hate, some I'm unsure of, etc. As I continue through the book, I even found myself getting mad at some characters. That's when I know I actually like what I'm reading. Did any of you guys like having a list of characters involved in the novel, or was it ever overwhelming for you? It was definitely overwhelming, but I enjoyed that. It kept me focused because I knew if I lost focus for just a second while reading, I would be lost. I kept a lot of notes, too, in order to keep up. I felt as though I was reading a long list of connecting people. Yeah, when I first started reading the novel, it was extremely hard to keep track of all the characters and how they're affiliated to Midak Alley. This included who they related to, where they worked, and who liked who. Because everything was happening so fast and so many characters were being introduced so quickly, I had to reread the first two characters and make a list. I even drew out a picture of where everything was in Midak Alley. This included the sweet shop, the barber, and how can we forget, Kirsch's Cafe. Kirsch's Cafe was just a place to be. It was where everyone gossiped and drank. What did you guys think about Kirsch's Cafe? Did you guys think it was essential to Midak Alley? I definitely would say that Kirsch's Cafe is an essential part of Midak Alley. It's where many of the male characters would congregate and interact with each other each night. Since women are not allowed in the cafe, it also serves as a place for Kirsch to bring the young boys he lost after. As a reader, you are able to learn a lot about the characters based on how they interact with each other. I found the layout of the novel to be very interesting. Each chapter focuses in on a particular character and you get to learn about the latest news going on his, in his or her lives. The next chapter will focus in on a different character and so on. And then the novel will return back to the first character. But there is a smooth flow throughout the chapters because of the interactions between characters. So even if a chapter is focusing on a certain character, other characters will still appear or be mentioned. Back to talking about Kirsch's cafe. What does the fact that only men are able to be served at the cafe say about the gender roles in the novel? Gender roles is an interesting subtopic within this novel. During this era in Egypt, traditional gender roles were starting to shift. Women were still far inferior to men, but they were starting to move in the direction of equality. There are a few specific female characters that demonstrate the ongoing shift of power from the males to the females. For example, Husnia is a woman who completely reverses the typical gender role by taking on many traits of the men during this time. She exercises complete control over her cowardly husband and even physically abuses him. Another woman that resists the current gender schemas is Hamida. Hamida is a powerful person who has no difficulty exercising power over all the men she attracts. In Midak Alley, we are also seeing women who are completely self-sufficient and do not rely on their husband to be the primary breadwinner. Miss Sania Afifi is completely self-sufficient and does not depend on her husband at all. She only keeps him around for companionship. Companionship and love are a major theme in this story. So how do we see marriage and love portrayed in Midak Alley? Marriage and love is seen in a few different lights throughout this novel. Most modern day women in the United States usually define the purpose of marriage as a promise of love and two people sharing their lives together. We tend to think of getting married as a milestone in life, but one that is usually by choice and driven by emotions. For women in Midak Alley, marriage is seen not only a milestone, but security. Women want to have a man who can help provide them and their family. They also want the rest of the people in the alley to see that they're are in some ways respectable, desirable, and a true woman now from her marriage. Other ideas of love as desire were also a key part of the novel. Kirsch's desire for young men, Abash's desire for Hamida, 
Hamida's desire for Ibrahim, the list goes on and on. Along with that, an ongoing theme seemed to be the chase of one character after another, or even the idea, the idea of an affair was quite common. Each desire is often driven by a bigger idea as well, whether it be unhappiness in their current marriage, sexual orientation, excitement in entertainment, or a new way of life. This brings me to Hamida falling for Ibrahim and leaving with him in hopes of a new and luxurious life. How important would you say that money is in this novel? Would you say that money might be one of the most important themes? I would say that money is one of the most important themes in this novel. Throughout the novel, characters were defined by the amount of money they owned. The characters of Midak Ali were also given their social status based on money. Money was a driving force. Many of the characters had a desire to have more money in the novel. Some examples are Hamida and Abbas. Hamida wanted to live the luxurious life. She was very materialistic and in a way shallow. This all leads with her going off with Ibrahim to explore the life outside of Midak Ali. Abbas, on the other hand, wanted money to win over Hamida. Because of his desire for Hamida, he went off to work for the British Army. Class and upper mobility also relate to money. People tend to want what they can't have. We see this idea throughout the novel. Like Hamida wanting a life of luxury, most people in the alley want more than what they have. For example, Mr. al Wan is the wealthiest man in the alley. If money was the source of happiness, he should be content. Yet, Mr. al Wan lusts after Hamida. Zeta, the cripple maker, wishes to be with Husnia, but she is married. Again, a character wanting what they can't have. Hussein Kersha is also unhappy in the alley. He decides to leave, only to return later with a wife and no money saved. Are there any people who are actually happy in the alley? Well, most of the people in the alley seem unhappy. For example, Mrs. Kersha stays with her husband, although he brings young boys to the cafe. They share a dishonest marriage, but despite the unhappiness, they aren't doing anything to change and live more happily. Their unhappiness is furthered when Hussein leaves. On the other hand, I do think some people are happy. I think that Uncle Camille is content with his life in the alley. He owns the sweet shop and doesn't seem to make much of a fuss through the novel. Um, Hamida also seems happy. She arranges marriages and takes pleasure in spreading gossip throughout the alley. Though Abbas was heartbroken by Hamida's betrayal, I believe that he would have been content working as a barber in the alley. Midak Alley was an interesting novel that we discussed during the unit of adaptation. We discussed desires, social status, money, marriage, and love. There were numerous characters that were difficult to keep track of at times. However, coming together and discussing what took place in the novel helped us to better understand the themes and meanings that went on in the alley. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed as well.